the one and only Rachel Feinstein. Thank How you. How are you? Thank Who will you be at me. Helium Comedy Club in Philly. Yes. Because that's a chain now. In Philly mm-hmm. uh, for New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve weekend. New yes. Year's Eve weekend. Get- What's going on? Not much. It's weird to be here. It's weird to see you. I mean, is it weird to talk to me in this this controlled environment after all these years? I mean, I've known you since like what, yeah, ninety nine, two thousand. Yeah, when we first met, we were like neighbors on the Upper East Side, and um, we used to drink at that dive bar, like mug shots. We, I was like, yeah, you, me, Sherrod, the Upper East Side crew. I was like violently poor. Like me and Sherrod used to call our apartment squalor because it was just so unacceptable. We had a shower in the kitchen, <laughs> and Sherrod would just bring <laughs> random girls through there, and and there was no there was no door on my bathroom, um, or my bedroom rather. They the girls would have to walk through my bathroom it was railroad and go oh, into that was the a railroad apartment. It was a fucking railroad and Tony and Sherrod were just getting so much ass and they thought it was hilarious that they would have to parade the girls through my room to use the bathroom whenever they were getting laid and I'd have to have these weird uncomfortable conversations with some girl like holding her t-shirt down (laughs) and like and I felt like Sherrod would openly say this he'd be very pleased probably that I was telling more people about this but he he would (laughs) use me as like part of the oiling process with the women because he'd be like look I have this female roommate he's like yeah you're safe yes you're safe and I'm like I'm telling them with their eyes you're not you're making a terrible decision but Shra was like, yeah, no, it was helpful, right? He's like, that's how I got my a good flow in. I was like, I'm just disg- I was part of the lotioning up. Like, <laughs> look, there's a woman here. It's got to be a good idea. You're lucky the FBI didn't come in because he would have <laughs> taken off and you would end up having a, you know, they do that in those boiler rooms. It's always like <laughs> yes. the low person on the totem pole. Those were such fun days, though. I remember. Uh, we had a lot of fun. We were so poor, but I was having so yeah. much fun. I, I, that was, I was sleeping on the, uh, the futon. And mine was actually a studio apartment that they slammed a wall into yes. and called it a one bedroom. And I was like, I have a one bedroom apartment. No, to me, you were rich. Yeah. I was like, I know a successful person. And then I yeah. met the, the chick upstairs who had the exact same unit above me. And his was just like this giant studio. And uh, I, I never even brought it up to my landlord or anything. I was just, I, I knew. Oh, that they sold it as a, as a, as a one bedroom. I could have complained and gone to the board and done all of that. But I was just like, do I really want to waste? It's like, all right, I've never gone me. to any, who has time for a board? Yeah. That I point. did it one time. Really? Yeah. Against the taxi driver. What happened? What was the situation? Um, we got into it on the, uh, the FDR <laughs> trying to fucking, who was going to go. Mm-hmm. And I ended up <laughs> winning. Mm-hmm. Who was going to go next? You know, those New York battles with the car. Yeah. So he was fucking, I could see him yelling at me and shit. And I was being, you know, I was being a dick. So I was sure. just sort of like you waving. Enjoying it? He was beeping the horn and everything. And I was just <laughs> waving and everything. And then when he drove by me, uh-huh. he took like, he had a handful of chains. At this point, we'd finally got on the FBR. We're doing like 50 and it was raining out. Yeah. And he fucking took his handful of change and he just was fucking throwing it at the <laughs> side of my change. car. He did it like three times. He had just chains. This is the ni- like the 2000s. So change. Yeah, people used to throw time. stuff from their car. So he just was just throwing it. It was like, can you change on the side? And I'm like, you fucking motherfucker. And he did it again. And he was such a dick. And I was so mad. I was like, all right, fuck this guy. And I got his number. And I actually complained. <laughs> and then we showed up. It was so funny because we showed up for the hearing and by then I wasn't even mad anymore. Yeah, and yeah. he showed up with a lawyer. <laughs> and I remember he was this Asian guy and he tried to make it racist. Really? Well, first of all, he admitted that he threw the change at me. Yeah. And so I was like, why the fuck would he do that? Why would he admit that? Well, first of all, he had a lawyer. It was him, <laughs> his lawyer, and me sitting, talking to this guy in a desk that was like half the size of this in this little room. And we would just see. <laughs> There's nothing dumber than two men mediating after they had a stupid fucking. It was really bad. It was really. I ended up feeling really bad. So he <laughs> admitted that he threw the change at my car, but he said he goes. <laughs> uh, he goes. I did it because I look over and he he would. He was looking at me. He was going like this. <laughs> what? And like he's like, I don't know why he. He was totally. He called you a hack. <laughs> and I was just like, so I was just like, you're telling me I was driving 50 miles an hour in the rain and I took Stop my hands off the window doing that. <laughs> And then the, that's when the lawyer jumped in. He goes, I think what we have here is a couple of people that got a little upset. <laughs> and the guy, ended up, he ended up getting suspended for like a week. There is. And I, then I, I felt bad. Say, yeah. I just wanted him to, I, I don't know why. I see one of the few vindictive things I've ever done. And I felt bad. And this is the fucking funny thing is I fucking got a cab 
like a month later, and I swear to God, I think it was him. And I really? got in the cab, and I saw the picture, and I heard his voice. I don't fucking know, yeah. right? And I, so I just sat directly behind him, and I was just <laughs> sitting there like that. And I was, I tipped him well in case it was him. I was it like, probably was. All right, there right, you go. I've had that happen before, getting back in a cab where I've had like a weird moment. It probably was him. That's hilarious. I had that one time because it was this crazy white dude who his claim to fame was he auditioned for like Metallica or something. And he was one of those guys. He had like surfer energy. That was going on, they bro. They you the whole story. They do that here. That's why I can't take the Ubers here. They just tell you their whole, yeah, the, their band, everything. Mm, oh, no, they thank do? you. They play things for me. Somebody plays something for me on the way over. He was like playing me his tracks and stuff. I'm Wait, like, you're minute. networking with me. I'm. Just I don't want to blame the victim here, but how does the conversation get that deep? <laughs> Don't you just that's put fair. some headphones on? Sorry, I have to take a call. No, this happens actually with to me all the time. That's very fair. Yeah, people just tell me things and then they'll start like weeping and stuff. They're like, I've never told anyone this before. But I definitely, <laughs> something's happening with me that I'm pulling. Because that would not happen with Billy. Like you would, nobody would start to. No, people do not open up to me. No, no I've like gently held people I don't know very well. <laughs> I Why? Held, I held a woman at like a CVS. <laughs> I don't know. People just start telling me like shit about their lives. They'll be like, it happens every time somebody opens for me. They'll be like, ah, shit. I Wait, what happens? Them. They just don't walk up to you. What, what no. happens before? Um, There's something you're doing. You're too friendly. I think I do. You know, I think it's some of it's probably for my mom because my mother, like, she loves like dark information. Like she wants to get to the bot. Like she listens with like a leg up like that, you know, and just <laughs> kind of jazzes out. <laughs> She loves to get to like the, we call it pain chambering because my mom likes to take somebody and like get to their pain. And I feel like I have, I'm like a little more fun about it. And she's but, acting like she's helping, but she's just into the gossip. Yeah, I think or she's somewhere in between, she, somewhere in between. She's, she was a therapist and with like no boundaries and would tell me the darkest, weirdest information about everybody, her patients. Like she was really going rogue. Like I would, she would pick me up once she picked me right, up. But she's like, done practicing, right? Not, not now. So I can't. <laughs> She's retired, thank okay, God. Okay, good. I was saying, but, no, she would pick me up from a play date and just tell me the crier. weirdest shit about like the parents. I was way too young. She'd be like, did I tell you that assaulted early on in the marriage and then it ruined their sex life because they never felt he could protect her. I'm like, I'm like, I'm in the sixth grade. How, how, like, okay. <laughs> she would tell me the weirdest shit. At what age did you finally just say like, mom, why are you telling me this shit? I told her I've I've confronted her like later on because like I'll I did a bit about it like about how the weirdest shit she would tell me. And I love my it mom, with the leg up is fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah, this is how she listens. Just <laughs> and it's really funny watching her and my husband because he's like a repressed Catholic fireman, and I'm like, oh, you can't pain chamber him. Like you're not gonna catch a wave with Pete. Like he's he's closed like a box. You know what I mean? And my mom tries to jazz in there. She wants to know about like fire trauma. She does like a shimmy when he starts talking about that kind of shit, but she can't get through. But like, I told her a story. I mean, she saw me tell a story about how she used to do that on stage once. And she's like, I didn't do that. If you want to put it in your talent show skit or whatever. But I was like, yes, you did. You, and I'm like, how else would I have known that was raped and that her husband couldn't protect her and that it ruined their sex life? She's like, well, you got me there. <laughs> I'm like, that's Dude, I have this cough that I, the only time I, it happens is when I laugh. So this is going to be difficult here. I have to edit this out. Oh, also, coughing. I have to say about the change. I throw change. I think throwing change is very funny. And I have throw. I used to throw change on this guy after we would ex-boyfriend of mine after we mm. would have sex. Cause it's just a funny thing to throw change. And I dated a guy once that or would just throw. Say, go get yourself something nice. I just be like, you're disgusting. What happened right here is disgusting. <laughs> and I just throw some nickels on it. <laughs> One time we fought because he caught me gathering the change and getting it ready like we were about to hook up and I was prepping the change like ahead of time. So the sex was literally a setup for the punch. <laughs> yes. Well, it's funny. I was like, I knew it would be funny after. So I was like, I brought the change bedside, but I would just toss it on him and I'd be like, you're disgusting. Now go out and buy yourself something special and just sort of give him like a soft, slow face <laughs> rake. <laughs> when I do that to my husband, he gets terrified. I'll give him just a soft, soft like... This is a guy that like runs into act burning buildings. When I go like that to him, he shudders, like shakes like a bitch. Yeah, I'm just like, make... shh, you shut up, all right? Don't feel sad or feel, or I'll try to replay Can the sex. The... I'll be like, let's talk about some of the things that happened. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> let's process. Should we go through the earlier beats? <laughs> You're bringing my fucking cough back here. Sorry. Andrew, is this going to be a problem or what? Sorry. Um, let me ask you. So, do you? Th so that's basically you just doing your mom. I sort of am, except I feel like with me, 
I think my mom is, look, I'm not saying that I'm not a cocktail of problems myself, but my mom's just like a heavier person. That's probably why I'm a comedian, because she would just like lock me in these dark, weird stories. You know what I mean? But I think I have, I feel like when people open up to me, like- My dad would do the same thing. Would he do that too? He, he would like talk about all this trauma at the fucking yeah. hospital. And it's, it was his way of getting us, him getting him out of taking us to do stuff. Where he would just, whatever you wanted to do is, ah, you know, I had a pastry in the other day. You know, they went out to McDonald's and, uh, you know, there was a train track there and he lost his leg. Let out. That's so funny. He's gone. Your dad painted He's gone. you. There's nothing you can do. Nothing you can do about it. It's like, you can just say, I'm tired. I don't want to bring you like anything that you, you know. I don't want to take you to the diner. What would you, where, where would you want to go that you would get out of? By it was usually some... like toys or, or something yeah. that you wanted to get. Like, uh, I mean, a lot of it, you know, there was a lot of lawn darts, bow and arrows, and four three wheelers <laughs> back then where kids were actually dying on. So, um, you know, he heard that. And he's all of those stories, too. He heard them secondhand. I mean, he wasn't yeah. working on stuff like that. He was all natural facial and prostadonna shit. Yeah, my mom will take anything she can get. It could be three, three times removed from the family. I'm like, why the fuck am I hearing about any of this? And it's, it's, she'll be like, she'll start with a certain tone in her voice. She'll be like, did you hear? You know, and I'm just like, oh, Christ. And she'll be like, yeah, I think you went to, he she tries to lock you with her eyes. She does this weird thing. I love the names. Yeah. She's you went to Hebrew school. I'm like, doesn't ring a bell. It's never positive. She's never like, oh, well, he's getting a lot of pussy and he went to Harvard. No, she's like, he's got... <laughs> She's like, he's got COVID-19. She always says the 19. I'm like, no one says the 19 anymore except my mom. I'm like, and if you try to, God forbid, imply just gently that someone might be okay. I'm like, well, I'm sure he's vaccinated, mom. I think he'll be all right. I don't think so. You know, he's immunocompromised. She gets Does mad. Does she still say Sears Ro and Roebuck? Yes. Oh, she's. COVID-19, she... Sears and Roebuck. <laughs> trying to think of something else where they, that somebody got bought out. I don't even think Sears is even around anymore. <laughs> No, that's, you know what? Either. That's where I'm at that age now where it just there's all of this stuff closing and I drive down the street like, oh, no, why would they close that? <laughs> like I just drove down. Do you get emotional about that? It's interesting. I know people that do feel I that do. It bothers bit. me. It bothers me if it's a place that I like uh, to be then just, you know, another stupid glass tower or some fucking Starbucks. Yeah, because there was this guy had this random business on La Brea out here mm -hmm. where he just bought these signs from defunct businesses and this crazy shit. I mean, yeah. Some of them were huge. And just all of this random stuff that, like, you know, somebody would buy and put in their house or maybe yeah. put it in, like, their man cave or whatever. It was obviously a very niche business on an expensive street in L.A., so its days were numbered. And I drove by it just yesterday. Mm -hmm. I was on my way down to the fucking 10 or something like that. And I drove by. And I audibly, by myself, I went like... <laughs> Oh, they knocked that place down. I didn't know. Why would they do? You know that one? Yeah, it's a lot of movie props and stuff. Yeah, movie props and stuff. It had all this really, really cool <laughs> shit where you just... He basically had all that shit where, you, you know, by the third time you moved, you're like, yeah. why did I buy this big stupid fucking sign? It's... Um, Caroline's closing. We were talking about that. I mean, we got to yeah. give a shout out to that. Like, that fucking place closing yeah. that's like the biggest one to close since the boston when the boston comedy club closed i was like oh my god that was the first like real um show that i did like where i was actually you know paid for comedy we used to have to do these bringer shows where you have to bring you know 25 people uh, to perform i didn't even have friends really in new york at that point i had like seven friends you were one of them i would just go to this local <laughs> bar and try to beg people to come to my show i felt terrible I remember this one guy would always come. He was like morbidly obese. He played pool. And I was like, he would all, Rufus would always make it down to my dumb bringer show. You know what I mean? And I had to bring Rufus, 20 people. the morbid obese, morbidly obese yes. pool player. And it's he would nice. just make it down. He'd be like, all right, baby, I like to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny that it's funny because like we'd had to do so many insane. And it, I would. They I didn't was, have bringer shows when I came up. You just performed in front of two people. 